So we're going out this time with just Ben so you can get some one-on-one -on -one practice. Most of the time we'll be walking with both Min and Bolt because we actually need them to work um, during their own interactions just because like with yesterday how Bolt's excitement causes Min to get excited as well and vice versa. But every now and then, it's good to work on them kind of individually just to practice their own skills and see how each individual pup is doing with their own ability to either, you know, calm down or, or redirect and not be influenced by outside sources. Tightening up his just a little bit. Okay, there we go. I'll be also trying uh, different ways of hopefully redirecting um, as opposed to just correcting the behavior. But right now he's got um, an anti bark collar on and just beep and vibrate in hopes that that'll be enough to kind of help to snap his attention and focus out of the dog. I think most of it will be dependent on the handler turning him away physically so that way he can redirect um, and or we'll have to correct him for reacting even when he is looking for either directly at a dog or walking by a dog. Because he is reacting more so it seems out of uncertainty of the other pup and fear, don't want to correct him too harshly just to punish him for being scared. But we want to try to time it so we can get him to redirect back to us to help him calm down so he doesn't get as scared and then give him those shorter corrections and then make it easier again when he does overreact for, you know, no good reason because there, we know that there is no, um, there is no danger there. Whereas he does not, does not think that way at all takes him quite a long time to get comfortable with new pups, especially larger ones. And so we actually need extended time. We need to have him have extended time so he can actually get used to the situation. And that in turn will actually correct the behavior by making it so he's comfortable and not scared. Whereas if we just tell him to stop barking because he's scared. You're only kind of uh, fixing the symptom, not the actual disease itself. And sometimes people are like, oh yeah, that's what I want. I just want my dog to not bark when they see another dog, which would normally be okay. But you have to understand You have to understand that if you don't fix the underlying problem and you only punish him for barking, then he might be really good at that. He might be really uncomfortable with the dog and scared of it, but now he knows that if he doesn't bark, he won't get yelled at or shocked or anything like that pulled away. Um, and that takes away our warning signs from him. So then you can have a dog that is seemingly non-reactive, 
perfectly calm, not barking or lunging at another dog. But then if the other dog gets too close, instead of those warning signals, he'll just lunge or bite or snap at him because he's still not comfortable with the dog. So I would much rather have him be visibly and auditory warnings showing us that he's not comfortable yet in a situation than to not have those warnings and have a false sense of security. This way too, kind of like with Ghost, the uh, white German Shepherd yesterday, it also lets you know when he's also getting more comfortable with another dog. When he is more actively avoiding the situation because he is afraid instead of um, barking and lunging because he's afraid. You'll still be able to tell that he's uncomfortable with the situation, but it's a lot easier to control and manage because now he's also trying to avoid the situation with you. And then the last step after that, kind of like with the pups at home, is him actually being comfortable being around other dogs and not trying to avoid them and not trying to bark or snap at them. And that definitely takes the longest for him. It's not that it's impossible, but when it took him about two to four days to get comfortable with dogs that were obviously not a threat and he could constantly be around in a good closed, in a good close environment, it's still supervised. If it takes him two to four days for that situation, it's kind of a tough ask for him to just be okay quickly meeting a dog that you guys kind of run across on the sidewalk. But that's what we're working on. Combination of desensitizing him so that way he gets used to those situations and then teaching him to redirect to us for more of that comfort and guidance so he doesn't feel the need to overreact than anything else. And that just takes a whole lot of repetition. Luckily he actually started taking treats for the first time yesterday, which was really good. Still trying to find things that he likes. Most of the time though, it's just gonna be, you know, the general good boy. And giving him some pets. Treats are good for a re reward, not just for rewarding the pup, but also because it helps to know how calm they are in certain cases. So like if uh, if a pup that's too anxious while we're out and about, for example, to take treats, but then back at home when they're calm and comfortable in the neighborhood, without anything going on, they're more than able to and happy to take treats, then that's how you'll also know when they're out and about and you're working on these social interactions how calm they actually are if they're able to redirect back to you and they're able to take treats as opposed to worrying about still or focusing on the other dog.
Min's potty habits are also a good indicator as well. Before he would have loose stool probably caused by his anxiety because he said he wasn't accepting any treats so there wasn't anything new in his diet and because his diet was the same as back from home the only thing that can happen sometimes is the bowels are moving or irritated just because he's more anxious now that that's clearing up as he's getting more comfortable with his roommates and new surroundings it kind of helps to also show the level of anxiety that he has when you know he's separated from his usual home and is now kind of forced to be in the social situation that's another good way to know that he's actually feeling more comfortable around the other pups in general good boy everything else staying the same within his diet now it's going back to more solid as he's definitely a lot more comfortable around the other pups There it is. Min. Oh, good job. Come here, bud. Come here. Good boy. He responded to his name and started turning around, so that was good. I was only applying a light pressure on the leash, trying to get him used to it so when he does hear his name, he'll just automatically do it all on his own. Sometimes to get that reaction just requires a lot of consistency and repetition. Just because he's so used to hearing his name and being forced to kind of turn around. Kind of back on a normal work week schedule. Bless you. So, just gonna do some more normal redirection exercises. See how he reacts to the collar. And then maybe later on as well, take him to the shopping center nearby for some more social walks. Try to start off on days when it's gonna be a little bit quieter out. Monday evening and then slowly build up to those busier times like maybe a Friday evening or a Thursday evening at the pet store or at the shopping center in general so if we go right now to the pet smart now that it's kind of opening you'll probably have very few people and even fewer people bringing their pets whereas if we waited until the evening time most people are off of work they'll be more inclined to take their pets with them to go and run those errands Min. Min. Good boy. Hi. Good boy. Very good. Good. 
He stopped and turned. He was doing it with no leash pressure at that time, or trying to. I'd like to get him to actually come back a little bit as well. In. Come. Good boy. Good boy. Good job. All right. Let's go. Oh, yeah, you're tired. Slight distraction going on. Slowly increase the pressure until he gives up and starts coming with. And then release him. Good boy. Man, this way. Boy. Come. It's important to practice these very basics when he's not distracted, so it's easier for him. He really needs to develop these kind of things as much as possible for when it does get harder for him. It's always good to do things gradually. He'll need different types of training. Sometimes when it's like this, good boy. And it's quiet and he should be able to, to listen and respond without too much trouble. And then maybe medium level of distractions being able to redirect when the, the dog is even in sight or further away and then all the way up to the higher levels like yesterday when they are either directly walking towards him or barking or just in very close proximity so even when you're out and about and you don't see any dogs it's still good to practice the other parts for him as well just that normal redirecting as if you know you pretend that that dog came around a corner there be like hey min come good boy good boy all right what do you think good guy good And give him a little break and do his brother next. Okay, now we have Bolt's turn. 
got just the anti bark collar on them and the beep and vibrate setting. See how that affects them if he does start overreacting and starts barking. It's enough of a deterrent for it to get his attention or if he just ignores it. Still a little bit early during the day on a Monday. Good boy. Um, so not too many people around, not too many pups. Just like with his brother, it's good to practice um, when there's little to no distractions out as well. Just so that way you can just get a good, more comfortable walk in um, while practicing, just redirecting. Get some exercise, use his nose. His walking behavior is greatly improved. Hardly ever needed to use the, um, the head halter, which is really good. Just continuing. Um, you're okay. Why? Hi, how you doing? Oh, good boy. Come here. You're okay. Come here. Bolt, come here. Come here. Bolt, you're okay. Oh, it's okay. So sometimes hey, his uncertainty kind of just kicks up a notch when uh, he doesn't see something. Oh, there you go. Good boy. There you go. So at least he uh, he noticed and recognized that. He didn't freak out, which is good. But um, especially if somebody just is around the corner and he didn't see them from further away. So what we'll try to do is uh, walk him out and then walk him back in give them some more time to see that person, right? And we'll see how comfortable he is either moving towards them on his own or with our help. Found some distractions in the grass there. Good boy, come. You're okay. Good. Much better. So helping him out a little bit there. You can tell he's still not the most comfortable. They're not gonna force it. Just give him some time. Good. So checking back in. So now we'll take that opportunity to walk back through. Come on, buddy. Good boy. Good boy. Good pee. And now, just like um, the same with yesterday, when they're uncertain or overreacting making sure he's on the opposite side of what's making him uncomfortable or unsure. And that way it's easier to body block if need to. Good, there we go. Good. You can see by the hair sticking up there. He's a little bit aroused. Uh, I was pulling towards maybe either to investigate or to create extra space by pushing them away. It did well. Didn't overreact. Right. And that's how we'll know, you know, how comfortable he is or isn't in a certain situation while still kind of being safe. Mm -hmm setting him up for success, being ready 
to help him if he needs to to be redirected. The leash pressure alone. Yes, good boy. And then we'll practice again with his name as well. Give him a little bit of time to reset. Once he goes by me, boat. Oh. Yes, good boy. Good listen. Good job. start applying some light pressure and then when he breaks yes good boy okay. so a couple things he was working through there it was just the distraction because he was already interested in smelling the pole probably a lot of dogs to feed on and then also the distraction of the dog that was barking in the window I want this to be a little bit more of an exercise and freedom walk for him. I'm gonna go ahead and let him smell, explore, see if he needs to use the bathroom or anything. I'm just keeping him from pulling too hard the opposite way or going too fast in front. And then when he does, kinda is done exploring whatever he wants, then I'll start walking again. as a boundary. See some birds. Good boy. I'm ready to move on. Outside of practicing with the leash pressure and his name, Sometimes it's good that he just kind of gives up on his own accord and redirects back to you naturally without having to be prompted. Yes, good boy. That way he just conditions himself for feeling rewarded for checking in periodically on his own. Good boy.
practice his name now that he's kind of distracted. Oh, never mind. Is about to go, but then they're distracted. Here you go, bud. You want to go potty? You can. Because I want to keep him out of the taller grass. Because if he does go, it's a lot harder to clean up, and also to avoid any you know, ticks, uh, bugs. Go ahead and continue walking, so that way the leash pressure kicks in for us, and just catches up. grass for makes an extra space. Okay. We'll go this way. Good boy. Good job. Good boy ball. Good. Nice. So wanted to guide him out of the way but then also wanted to see how unsure he was uh, sometimes the, the strollers can be a scary thing uh, see if he was interested he was, he was more slightly uncertain but definitely not the reactive level which is good and also not curious enough to want to go in to investigate as well Freedom walks like that. Really good opportunities to kind of learn to see what we need to either focus on more for the rest of the day or issues that he's having problems with or is uncomfortable with or things that he likes. Some leash pressure again for him. Yes, good boy. Job. Letting him smell and explore. We'll have the options. If there is a dog coming, it'd be good to see if he uh, checks him out and interacts or anything. Would use his name or the leash pressure at that point. 
to peel them off, but you might have already noticed already anyways. So especially in this instance where we don't want him to kind of fixate to that point where he gets apprehensive or overreacts, the, these environmental distractions can be really helpful. I'm just going to go ahead and encourage him to walk up a little bit, seeing the pup get a little bit closer. He's doing really good there. And then we'll redirect with his name. Once he seems focused on something, maybe the person or the dog. Oh, never mind, he's doing it on his own. Good boy. Good job. Oh, got it. Good boy. Come on, big guy. So we'll let the gentleman go up front first. It looks like he's trying to cross. And then we'll catch up behind. Bolt is pretty neutral. Not too apprehensive and not too interested, so. Boy. It's important since we'll be working with him throughout the day that he gets some good free time while you're still practicing good habits while you're out because he'll have more, of course, um, stressful situations and sessions for him where he'll be working a lot more intensely. So it's good to have times like this um, either in the early mornings and sometimes later in the evenings to just kind of evaluate to see how well he's doing on his own with kind of minimal inputs. And like I said earlier, it can be really helpful in the mornings. Say, um, if he wasn't responding so well to the sound of his name, that could be something that we focus on for that day. Or if he's not responding so well to the leash pressure, maybe we'll lean heavily, a little more heavily on that kind of practice. So it's a good way that you can kind of get a good syllabus going for the rest of the day. And that way, at the end of the day, when you're walking, you'll be able to test those things again to see if he's made some good improvements. Bolt. Oh, good boy. Good job, big guy. Maybe do one more leash pressure one. Yes, good boy. Very good. Out at about the usual dog walk evening time. Got everybody fully geared up and everything. Had a good walk this afternoon as well. So, pretty much we're gonna go out looking for, for other pups. Give them an opportunity to make sure they redirect themselves. See how well the anti-bark collars do to help with correcting their behavior if they decide to overreact and bark. And then of course giving them treats and rewards when they stay behave and or redirect back to us. There is a little windy out, so hopefully the audio isn't going to be too bad, but it's not too hot. Hopefully be able to get in at least a couple rounds walking. Good 
boy. What? Attention, hi. Good boy, man. <laughs> nah, nah, it's okay. They'd do the same thing if they actually saw him. <laughs> Good boy. Good boy. Oh. Good job. Boy. Man. <laughs> Min, come, come here, come here, big guy, come here. Oh. I know. Okay, here you go. Oh, you sleepy. All right, come on, big guy. Oh my goodness. You need to do with you, big guy. Try to make it to the shorter grass. There you go. Good boy. Good boy. Looks like Bolt might have to go to the bathroom. And then, oh, you're sleepy. You're sleepy, big guy. actually started playing with another pup too which is really good to see if they start up again I'll try to definitely capture it on video oh good boy hold on man ah, good job good boy guys right. go ahead and let this person pass oh <laughs> there we go 
apa? Trying to strike a good balance of walking between these two. Nin always seems to want to go forwards. Walt likes to stop a little bit more often and smell some things. He gets distracted with the people. Good boy. Got a little kid coming over. Go ahead and cross. Oh, that's the twins from earlier. Bolt's looking around for where the, uh, the barking is coming from that he hears in the distance. Bolt has so much extra collar. What are we eating, bud? Uh, veggie straws. Probably still not a good idea, though. Come here, Bolt. Bolt. Come. Bolt. Bolt. Ah! Eating random stuff on the ground. Bolt. Hey. Focus. It's not a buffet. Okay. Come on. A lot of kids in the neighborhood you can at least generally tell where the bus stops or areas are because that's where extra snacks and stuff sometimes litter the floor all right well don't see anything up top that way let's see if there's anything over here uh, if not we'll still loop around anyways
Huh, looks like someone left their door open. Hopefully they'll be back. Alright. See if the pity is out playing with his family. No. There's also another lady with a pit bull. And then another lady up on the street to the right that has two smaller pups as well. down there. I don't really see anything up here, but we'll at least we'll loop around. Don't run into anybody. Oh, there's somebody in the car. Hey, are you done? <laughs> well, this way, guys. Good boy. <laughs> You're okay. He's just spraying water. Bolt is definitely very jumpy. Gets startled very easily. Everybody running late from work and caught up in traffic still today. It's 6 15. Usually from 6 to 7, there's always pops out for a walk. Yeah, we'll definitely have to. Start taking them to the dog park this week. Did a session up at the Pet Smart today for Goose. That went really well. I mean, we only saw one dog, but we got to see a couple dogs on the way there. We did uh get to greet them and everything so that was good the other one was pretty close proximity the indoor tight space would be a lot to ask to these guys right away unfortunately for the most part too a lot of people when they're out walking their pups you know, generally have a, a limited time window and then of course these guys start barking <laughs> that window shrinks pretty quickly. <laughs> uh, very much patience or scared, especially with the uh, men's size and intensity. 
Uh, see one dog there. They're going the other way. I wonder if we can actually. Let's, tr let's try cutting them off and going around this way. And then we'll double back, make a big loop around. And it'll hopefully give us another opportunity to run into them. Because there is nobody else out right now. There's some kids. They're going back the other way. Okay. okay. Come on, big guy. Good boy, man. Good boy, boy. Okay. So they may be <laughs> actively trying to avoid other dogs because of their dog from that reaction. So, yeah, it was a good try. Keep walking around this way. See if we run into anybody else.
bless you. Yeah, now they're going down that way, so. Definitely trying to avoid other dogs, I think. That's okay. We will not make life difficult on them. Go back home the other way. See if there are any pups. There are hardly any being walked out on the way back with uh, Goose from PetSmart. So we're definitely not too early. And go out later. Oh, look at the little one. Oh, hi. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think, Bulk? What do you think, man? <laughs> Good boy, come on. What do you think, man? Like bolt size, huh? The little one. <laughs> Come on, good boy. Good job. <laughs> Definitely interested, that's for sure. Oh, here we go. So what I'll do, especially since it's a smaller pump, so we'll make some space for them by going up this way. <laughs> and they're already barking at Min and Bolt, so we'll go ahead and get ready to redirect them if necessary. I'm in. No. I got that cute Yorkie. Good boy. Okay, good job. Might have gone too far. But <laughs> it's okay. Not sure if you even noticed. Oh, there we go. He's cute though, isn't he? What do you guys think? Oh. Oh. Good boy, yes. Good boy, man. Oh, would you like that treat? Would you like that treat? Mr. Drooly Drool. Mr. Eye Crusty. Okay. Alright, let's go get you some water. Okay. Make life easy on him. Good boy, Vault. Some leash pressure, there we go. And we're off. <laughs> well, at least you guys did better than that small pup. It's always nice having smaller pups because that hugs similar behavior but with men's size <laughs> always makes it seem so much worse. <laughs> and they're a dog like men. He is a good boy though. Oh, I thought he was gonna eat something. He actually just stopped to pee. doing on battery 7% okay so this is gonna die soon 
Uh, there's another pup coming up, so hopefully it'll hold out for at least that much. I'll just keep going uh, until after that pup, and then afterwards we'll go ahead and turn this off for now. Might not even get to see the other pup at this rate, Mr. Bolt. Sure like to stop and smell his stuff. Hi. What do you think, bud? That's a pretty doggy. I don't know if you saw him. I don't know if Mint. No, Mint! Oh my god. Okay. That is the opposite of respectful, sir. It's definitely uh, the cons of those signs. And he draws dogs to actually pee on them. Oh, dear goodness. All right. I'm going to go ahead and cut there. Oh, look at the puppy in the stroller. Oh, what do you think, Bolt? <laughs> they got a sweet ride. Uh, and then the other pup went this way. So we'll go ahead and cross and try to go back home. They're pretty small, <laughs> so might not be able to, to meet depending on how Min is. <coughs> or Bolt. Oh my gosh, that one's tiny. Oh, look, they're running back. Bolt's getting excited seeing the other dog running and is now running <coughs> or wants to run too. Sorry, Bolt. <coughs> this is only your second trip out. It's like my sixth, so <coughs> there will be no running right now. You definitely got excited and took notice though. Oh, dying. All right. Good boy, come on. Oh. That minute giving up on me for a second there. <laughs> 